Shalom. Shalom Tana. Aina is a link. Greetings. Aina Rasia Dino Stefarine. This is your brother Wendem Yado. And as you know, Malcolm Adis Ahmed. Happy New Year. Happy Ethiopian New Year from I and I. From I and I family of the faith and from the line of Jewish society to Rastafari, to I and I elect brothers and sisters, as well as to the Ethiopian Hebrew and the Beta Israel diaspora, also looking forward to Rosh Hashanah, which, as we mentioned before, is according to the lunar, telling time from the lunar side or the moon side, which is related to the law and to the mother. As we know in our Hebrew way of life, that is according to the new moons, that the holy days, the covenant Kal Kidan holy days. Now, the Ethiopian New Year is a part of that, but it's according to the solar or the fatherhood, with the fatherhood being established with our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. Now, this particular uh, vlog or message and teaching we intended to be on the subject matter of Ki Tavo or Ki Tabo. Now, what is Ki Tavo, Ki Tabo? Well, if it was not for this particular, give me a moment right here, if it was not for this particular um, New Year occurring at the time that it did, and also the need to update our brothers and sisters and family with some of the, the details regarding the new year, what we would have, what we would have sought to, to, to do and sought to accomplish was the sabbatical readings and feedings in the Torah, the Ori, the Torah portions. Now, give I and I one, 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 one moment. Grab your, grab your pen and your paper and bring a willing mind to receive some of the most relevant, amazing truths concerning us, the once lost but now found Beta Israel in the Americas and the Caribbean and the diaspora scattered throughout the islands and all over in, th in this western hemisphere. So grab your pen and your paper and bring a willing mind and be prepared to receive some of the hidden truths that have been hidden from us since our ancestors, the so-called enslaved Africans, were brought through this Ethiopic Hebrew Holocaust to the Americas and the Caribbean. So grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture, the, the Metaph to the Bible. Now, in going through this particular um, um, subject uh, matter, and this is the, the Torah portion reading, and we're at 50th. Now, the new year, according to the lunar calculation, or according to what we can say, the law, the law of the law of I and I mother. Now, where are we deriving this from? Let us give you some information, some background information. This is why it's good to journal, to journal your notes and study. So, we have a couple of different. Um, um, books and documentation that we might get an opportunity in this uh, in this vlog in this lecture to kind of update you with some material that is is necessary for those in independent studies and other brothers and sisters in discipleship and those who want to know the truth for themselves they will need at least to get some access to certain documentation because education as the King of Kings makes very clear to us education is the key. So we have to invest in our education because education is um, very expensive. So we understand what's going on with education, well, to some degree. In fact, we saw a very interesting program on um, on PBS tonight. And this particular interesting program on PBS was uh, Tavis, Tavis Smiley. And he had a, a program that was uh, Tavis Smiley reports too important to fear a disturbing aspect of the education crisis and the um, the concerning the the, the male black um, 
um, um, teenagers, you understand what's, what's happening concerning the male black um, um, teenagers, you understand, is being examined, in, 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 in other words, concerning the fact that black males in this particular economic time and throughout America's history, it has always been the black male basically that was at the bottom, the very foundation and the exploitation of the black male is more than just circumstantial, but we can see it in different circumstances. And that's the important thing about this Torah portion reading, the 50th call, Ki Tavo in the Hebrew, Ki Tavo, which means when ye enter, Bamarinya in the Metzav Kedus of Haile Selassie in the Bible of His Majesty, is called Begebahim, Gizeh. Now, this particular chart that we have, um, this particular chart that we have online, one can download for free. It's a, it's a PDF, a PDF chart, and the cover looks something like this: the Sabbath House reading, and in it we have some of the basic um, weekly Torah portions, what we call the weekly Torah portions. We, we were asked when, exactly when. Which, how do we know which days or time that which is read? In other words, each Torah portion. And this is what we tried to address in previous videos. So one can understand, first of all, the telling of time. This is why we keep referring to time. And there's some other programs, y'all willing, that we'll have an opportunity to, to, to create and to disseminate and to put out there concerning time and telling time and Ethiopic time and as we've been touching on spiritual time and the basis of spiritual time and even this particular time, the Ethiopian New Year, why on the 12th this year instead of just on the 11th? And in tune with that, under, that understanding helps us to understand why there's no particular dates for these 50-54. You understand um, Torah portions, what's known as Torah portions. Now, when you look at the Hebrew name, which is in our chart is the secondary name after the um, the solstice of after the slash, the slash, which is the secondary name. If you look up these names right here on the internet and go to Wikipedia, there is a very good um, summary. Of course, it's from a um, Polish and German Jewish so-called perspective, but still it's very important for us to at least familiarize ourselves with what is known or what is believed concerning our lost sheep heritage, our divine, actually our divine heritage. Now, there's some very important books, and let's just point these books out before we even get into it. So the, 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 the knowing of the right time, when is the right time? is discussed somewhat on in the Wikipedia and on that particular site concerning each individual um, Torah portion. So you can go to Wikipedia and they have all 54 from, as we said, from the Ashkenazi, the European Jewish perspective. But one should trust and receive the Holy Spirit to guide them so that don't doubt the fact that even if there's something that's not true in it, that the Holy Spirit will not inform you you understand, of, of all things. So this is not just on the material side of it, but it, there's the spiritual, as his imperial magic teaches, that spiritual power is very important. So this particular Sabbath portion, including some of the books that we want to just um, show to the eye, we, we mentioned this before, um, from Babylon to Timbuktu, in order to understand who we are as, as black Hebrews, you know, saying, or Ethiopian Hebrews, or so-called black Jews, and as elect Rastafari, who are we? You understand? And, and where do we derive this knowledge of ourselves? First of all, it's from the word and the truth of the Almighty. You know, saying it's from the B-I-B-L-E in the Bible. But we have to interpret and understand the Bible from our roots. So we need um, what they call secular or outside knowledge that helps to confirm, affirm, and put in the right context for us what is written in the Bible. And this is a very good book right here. This is from Babylon to Timbuktu by um, Rudolf, I think it's R. Windsor. 
right? This is the first book that he put out on this particular subject matter from Babylon to Timbuktu that shows that we as black people, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean, our great heritage, our divine heritage through countless millennia, you understand, greater than the so-called slave story, the enslaved African story that we know so well ad nauseum, you understand, but beyond that, we need to understand, people say, well, we came from West Africa, not East Africa. This book will demonstrate and point out facts that shows how we came from that furthest region over there to this fur furthest region over here. And the Bible now, which this author is also an, an, a black Jew or Ethiopian Hebrew like we are, this demonstrates from his rightly dividing the word of truth some of the details that is very excellent as a study, individual study and, and a Bible study, this book from Babylon to Timbuktu. We'll say that this book is well worth it. It's like eleven ninety five. It might be a little more expensive right now, but this is basically a history of the ancient black races, including the black Hebrews, this particular book. Now, his second book was this book here. This book here, which is called... Um, the Valley of the Dry Bones, the conditions that face black people in America. The Valley, hey, you see it right here, the Valley of the Dry Bones, the conditions that face black people in America. And we think this book right here is particularly prophetic, seeing the time that we're in with the first uh, black president. This book is extremely pr prophetic. When they ask or talk about economic crisis, and why is the economy so messed up and what can they do for America and, and so forth and so on. The answer to the economic crisis really is reparations. Was, let's say was, because it's, it's most likely too late. I'm not saying that the issue is not an important issue, but when we understand prophetically the signs of the time, most likely it's too late for that, although it's still a relevant issue but not to tell our people to get their hopes up or, or put their hopes on that only, on getting just a bunch of money, seeing that the money basically is not really worth anything. What we need is our divine heritage. And these two books, From Babylon to Timbuktu, as well as Valley of the Dry Bones, they help to lay a basic foundation. In the order, right order, it will be one and two. You understand? And where this book gives you the foundation of our history from Babylon to Timbuktu. Now, in the particular Torah portion reading that we are in, it basically is going to cover some interesting details. First of all, Kitavo, Kitabo, or Kitabo, or Kitabo. Some even say Kitavo, Savo, according to the forced Hebrew of today. You understand, there's a particular Hebrew that the Ashkenazi so-called Jews have sought to resurrect. In some ways, it is correct and it tends to be accurate. But in other ways, you understand, some of their own influence has weeded in. So we approach it from the Ethiopic, from our Ethiopian, our Ethiopic Hebrew root to, to ground ourselves, you understand, in our first language, the goodness which helps now illuminate a reconstruction of the Bible, of our history, and of our identity and our divine heritage. Now, the Hebrew Kitavo, which is this 50th portion, right, is called when you enter. And it's the second and third words and the first distinctive words in the Parsha or in the portion. And as we've been mentioning, it's the 50th weekly, in other words, the 50th weekly um, Torah portion or sabbatical Torah portion that's known in Hebrew as the Parasha and Bamarinya we call it a Minbab or Nibab which means a reading it's basically a reading Kufl also can be it can be called a Kufl uh, a Senbet Tawi or Senbet Kufl a Sabbath portion and this is in our annual Hebraic some say Jewish you understand cycle of Torah readings and it's the seventh in the book of Deuteronomy. This is the seventh portion now in 
Deuteronomy, you know, we're at the point of Deuteronomy because we're about to come to the end of the lunar solar year with Rosh Hashanah beginning September 28th. And the great thing about at least the Jewish holidays or the Hebrew holidays, seeing you know, we're Hebrew but they call them Jewish, you understand the Jewish holidays is that we know everyone in society, especially this Western society, know when it's a Jewish or a Hebrew holiday. So we have to also um, recognize that's an asset. That's an asset. The lack of this knowledge of self is a liability, but having that is an asset. Um, so this is the seventh in the book of Deuteronomy. It constitutes Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1, to Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 8. And Hebrews black Jews and white and other Jews who are more orthodox in the diaspora they generally read it in the month of September so it's important that seeing that we're in the month of September that we stick to this so that when the 28th to the 30th comes up we would have completed we would reach actually the 54th roughly around the 54th which is called Bamarinya in the Amharic Yeh Barakat Yehichnat, and in the Hebrew Wezot Ha Baraka, Wezot Ha Baraka, and this is, this is the blessing. You understand in which is in in which to bless, to be blessed. This is the blessing. This is the blessing. So when we reach that portion, which is on our Hebrew according to the Luna, and we mentioned the Luna refers to the law of the mother. And we just wanted to give you um, a, a verse on that to understand the lunar and the solar. Turn to the book of Proverbs. And like we said, we're going to go through a summary of Kitavo, which is our 50th uh, Sabbath um, reading. We didn't touch on it due to the correspondence of the Ethiopian New Year, the September 11th. This year is September 12th. Now, this, uh, we call it the RSS. You probably know that by now, which is the Rastafari, the Rastafari Sabbath, um, Sabbath scrolls or, or um, Sabbath studies. And it's known in the Hebrew, more quoted from the Hebrew verse, it's called Ki Tavo. I don't know if you can see that. Ki Tavo. Right? Ki Tavo. Right? That means like when you enter a Bamarinya in the Amharic in our pure language of the King of Kings and his Christ, it is known as the Gebahim. The Gebahim when you mail enter the Gebahim Gize. The Gebahim Gize. And this is referring to when the tribes were to enter into the promised land. And this is the very same position that we as uh, the diaspora, what's known as the diaspora, the African Hebrew or the black Jewish or the Ethiopian Hebrew or the, the black Israelite, or there's different ways of describing among different camps and different groups. And we should recognize that and, and, and to get off of the, a Phariseeism amongst us as black Hebrews uh, as African Hebrews or Black Hebrew Israelites or Ethiopian Hebrews, elect Rastafari, that divide and conquer goes as antithesis to the Al Kidan or to the Burt Hadash, and we need to recognize that. Now, this brings us to unity here, the sabbatical studies and studying the word and dialoguing with one another concerning our divine heritage. And it also establishes a foundation and a point of reference and a point of unity for us as a once lost but now found Beta Israel. And this is why this is very much key, and this is why this is part of our preaching and proclamation of the good news as Christ Himself, the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. As He said to the Sadducees, I believe, He said, You do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. You understand? So it's not for us to establish our own righteousness because we are black. You understand? 
they were unrighteous to us because we are black. But it's not for us to seek to establish our own so-called righteousness. We are black. You know what I'm saying? But that we understand what his righteousness is. What our black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach, Yeshua's righteousness is. And then we have to study and show ourselves a proof. Then we have to know the scriptures. You understand? Not just because of the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law and the instructions. The key thing is that the instructions are given to us there. You understand? Are given to us there. Now, the Gebahim Gizeh is when you enter into, you understand, the conditions of when you enter into the land. Now, one thing I've noticed, and I, I, I pointed this out in a previous, um, uh, some previous teaching, but I think I need to emphasize this until our people get it, until they become linguistically enabled to really see this for themselves within the scriptures. That in this portion right here, even the Bamarinya and the Amharic, which is the Gebahim Gizeh, which according to the Masoretic interpretation is Ki Tabo or Ki Tavo. And that means when you enter in, when you are entering into the land, into the land of our promise, into the promised land, there are conditions. But in that phrase, the Gebahim Gizeh, it is male singular. And this is, this is key for us to understand. It's not saying when you all enter in, but it's speaking to each of us individually as black men, but in our true divine heritage as Hebrews, you understand, as Beta Israel, as Israelites, you understand, or in the fullness as Ethiopian Hebrews, you understand, in that covenant that the Almighty has renewed for us, in this present day and time. And the link for us as Beta Israel with the covenant, with covenant Ethiopia. Now, now there's a distinction because there's careless Ethiopians who are not of the covenant. You know what I'm They're like the internal enemy, the enemy within. You know what I'm And then there are those Ethiopians who are of the al Kidan. And we have to recognize that as black Hebrew Israelites and as Beta Israel. But there are still many brothers out there who still resist or are ignorant or do not want to accept it or have not done the, 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 the homework in really studying it or got involved in a real dialogue, you understand, to really seek the truth. Some of them have already taken a couple of verses where it speaks about Ethiopia you understand, within the judgmental or the negative sense, and say, well, that's it right there. While we can point to many more verses that points to that coveted Ethiopia, the Ethiopia that stretched forth its hand to God, in the prophetic fulfillment of time, which are these so-called last days of the Gentile white world supremacy, you understand, these are the last days of the Gentile world dominion. The Bible is very clear on that. So, when we look at the scripture, the first thing, the, the key word, you understand, and we seek to understand it from the Hebraic as well as for us from the Amharic, we recognize that what we can gather out of it is that, first of all, it's speaking to each of us as individual black men. In other words, this particular section that we're going through, and some sisters might find it a little difficult to really accept because they too have been told and have been hoodwinked and bamboozled and told lies and deceived as a black man. And a good reference is the spell of Wooly Lynch or the Wooly Lynch spell or, or the Wooly Lynch papers and how to make a slave. That basically shows you what the systemic paradigm is. And it's so really unfortunate because many are trying to heal Babylon. There's, there are many black people who think that this system of things can be healed. Now, we have some prophetical words on that, exactly why it can't be healed, or we have tried to, and, and there would be that attempt. Martin Luther King's civil rights could be looked at as an attempt to heal um, Babylon or the daughter of Babylon. But the events of 9-11, as well as what's even happening right now with our first African-American president, kind of demonstrates that the, the sickness is systemic. This is why the divine word says, come out 
of Babylon, but not with haste. There will be that preparation. And this is all part of that preparation. And each of us must do our best and take personal responsibility. You know what I'm saying? And black men in particular. And we're going to have more on, on the black man. And all of us as brothers really need to dialogue and conversate about some important things. I've heard, I've heard you all. I've heard a lot of different ones and ones. And only a few are really touching the point on the head. There's only a few out there. They, they may not be Rastafari, you know, saying some may be Hebrews, like some may be Africans, Afrocentric or Egyptian, so forth and so on, but they still are part of this people here who really understand that there is a spiritual aspect. We as black men, in order to reverse this curse, which this particular 50th Torah portion, Kitavo speaks on, in order to reverse this curse, you know, saying we have to recognize that we have a God problem. You understand? We as the black man. If we ask ourselves, why us? Has God forsaken us? No. We as black men collectively, and many of us individually, we have forsaken his way. You know, saying have gotten hoodwink and bamboozle. The parable of Adam, Ha Adam, it is a very good example. And in that conspiracy, you know, saying against the black divinity or against God's purpose for black people. In that conspiracy, the black woman has been captured up in that, has been snatched up in that. The ma not the majority, not all of them, but a vast majority of them, you understand. And um, it's not about us judging, but it's about us judging by our own judgment, but judging by his righteousness. Not judging by appearances or how it seems, but judging righteous judgment. Now, with that being said, let us get into this portion. And in this portion, which is the 50th portion, to give a summary of, of some of, the, of the, the subject matters, the subject matters that are, that are discussed in this, our 50th Torah portion reading. And like we said, we're using the Wikipedia summary and we'll annotate and add to that wherever we, or make correction wherever we have evidence and facts that prove another side of it or something that is different. But the, but the basic summary of this 50th Torah portion reading that is named Ki Tavo in the Masoretic and in the Book of the Seven Seals or the Haile Selassie Bible is known as Dege Bahim Gizeh, which it also interprets when you enter in and when you enter in the land. There are five main um, sections or subject matter or content elements. And these five main ones are first fruits, the first fruits, the tithes, observing the law, our own law, not Babylon law, not the Gentile law, not the white man's law, or the green man, or just some African's law. No, observing God's law, Yahweh's law. Jah's law, if you please. The blessings and the curses, the blessings and the curses, the blessings for obedience and the curses for disobedience. And it's in these curses for disobedience, chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, verses 15 to 68, when we look at that in the context of what has happened to us, and when you got to check out this book right here, The Valley of the Dry Bones. If you haven't checked it out, if you've read it before, go pick it up again. You understand? Check it out and study this 50th Torah portion. You understand? From Deuteronomy um, chapter 28, verses 15 to verse 68. And you will see that more than any other people who are known to humanity, this sums up exactly what the so called African American, the Africans in the West, the black people who were enslaved, the Africans, so-called enslaved Africans in the Americas and the Caribbean or in the North Country of North America and also scattered the Caribbean and South and Central America as well have gone through. Now, the whole thing about the white Jews or European Jews, I think we need to, as a people, recognize it's more important for us to grasp a knowledge of ourselves and our way of life than going too far to get into too many senseless and pointless discussions 
you understand, about them and concerning them that takes us away from, from redeeming the time that we have. There's some established facts that are out there. You understand that they are converts, the Khazar, they're not the ethnic Hebrews, so forth and so on. Many of them are coming to the point to admit it themselves. They have not fully fulfilled revelation, where it says that when they do come over and bow down and recognize that God is within us, that's when a, a remnant, even among them, will be saved. The Almighty has their card. You know and it's for us now to restore you understand, restore that which was lost. You understand, and to and to receive that which the Almighty has for us in His Word and through the Holy Spirit or the Ruach Hakodesh. Now, these five these five major um, points. Let's see if we can write this up in this five major elements. There's there's uh, first. Right, there's first fruits, there's um there's first fruit, there's a tithe. There's a tithe, there is the um observing of the law or Torah, in other words, of the orit as we say, there is the the blessing and the curses, we call that B slash C. And because we have to get another marker right here. And then there is the exhortation to obedience. And and we'll call that the let's get another marker. We'll call that the obed. The obed. Because in the Hebrew that's a pun on the word abed, which means slave or servant. Oh, this is a little better. This is the obed for obedience. So the B and the C is blessing and the curses, observing the law, tithes, first fruits. You understand? This is all that is is contained in this portion. This is the main. This is in the main what is contained in this particular Torah portion. Now let's get into this. The first part will be first fruits. Like we said, there's five parts, and perhaps we'll do a portion in this one and come back and have a follow-up portion in a, in a following one. But let's at least get a, a good idea. And like we said, we're using the Wikipedia, and if you download our chart here, you go to Wikipedia, there's about 54 of them. Download that, and you can use that for good homeschooling, um, Bible schooling, or use it as a basic um, summary right now in one's independent study. And for the disciples, brothers and sisters who have requested discipleship, this is this is the beginning. This is where we begin. You know saying we're studying and showing ourselves approved and this is the particular order. So for this week we're gonna include the key tabo. Key tabo could we touched on it? It doesn't mean that the holiday or the holy day did not fall on that particular day. So therefore it's not suspended. But because of the Ethiopic New Year and I wanted to give you this verse about the solar and lunar before I forget. Um, solar and lunar, we said that the, the, or the loony solar, the loony solar. We have the lunar, which is the Old Testament, or the holy days according to the new moon. And then we have the New Testament with the solar aspect that is in the Ethiopic sense for us as the diaspora in the present time. Aren't you not like the Ethiopians unto me, O ye children of Israel? So that shows the link, not with everyone who says they're Ethiopian, but with the covetant Ethiopian, those who recognize that that Davidic or that Solomonic connection to the Kal Kidan or to the Banai Berit, to the Holy Covenant, the Sacred Covenant. Now, we wanted to mention Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, My son or my child, hear the instruction of thy father, of your father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. This is a, this is a principle right here from Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, My son or my child, 
hear the instruction of thy father. So from the father comes the instruction. You know what I'm saying? We find this especially within the New Testament sense of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. You know what I'm saying? Where he's speaking about the father and the father and referring to the father and what I've seen the father do, I do, and, and the father is greater than me. And it's the, it's the father that he comes to, to testify to as we see within the fulfillment of Christ's prophecy in his imperial majesty, we see his imperial majesty speak of the son, the son, the son, Gietachin Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, serving as a father serves his son, his majesty will also cryptically and mystically say, you understand, so we see that fulfillment within the king of kings, you understand, Haile Selassie the first and our Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? All testifying to the one truth for we, for we, you understand? For we, the, the Hebrews, the black Jews, the lost sheep, you understand? Because the salvation or the preservation of humanity is dependent upon God's chosen, God's chosen people, both his racially chosen as well as his uh, spiritually chosen. So there is inclusion for those who may not be of the race, but there's a certain standard, you understand, in his grace, not to fall from his grace, but to be able to stand in his grace. So this proverb scripture shows us that the father and the mother aspect, you understand, is something that is foundational in principle. But now as we continue to study that, we see within that, the father would represent the solar aspect, and even scripturally we see that. And the mother, the lunar aspect, as the Old Testament was, Israel was as a, a, a son with his mother only and without the father. And in the New Testament sense, Israel now has both mother and father, or has father and mother. Thus we have our luni solar calculation of time, you understand, because the heavens, according to Genesis chapter 1, the heavens is God's timetable, so it's important for us to understand that this is not so-called astrology or worshiping the host of heaven, no, we, we, you don't worship a clock, do you, do you, would you worship a clock, you know, oh, it was, oh great time, oh, no, you, you wouldn't do no, something would be wrong with you, but this is what's happened to, to humanity because they don't recognize that the heavens is God's clock. But biblically, we have the foundation for that. So the knowledge of this is very important in its proper context. So Proverbs, um, let's just put this right here um, on the Lumi Sola and put a reference to Proverbs 1 and 8. So we put Proverbs 1 and 8 right there as a, as a quick um, reference. So now the first aspect of this is now we can hopefully move forward in this. Just these some notes that we've been holding to share and just having the message, you know, we need to get it out and get it forward for those who are able and willing to receive. So it's the law of the offering of the first fruits. Also, we mentioned that since they came out of Egypt, and in our Ethiopic reconstruction of ancient Egypt and the Exodus, it's interesting that these type of offerings, we can see them foretyped, you know, saying, or we can see the, the original type or the type that they were familiar with before this mosaic type in the Kemet or in Egypt, in Egypt. Now, this offering, this first fruits offering is much like the hetep, or what's often called the hotep, the hetep offering, or the or, or sometimes considered to be the peace offering, in a sense. And there is a peace offering within the offering, but this is the first fruits, the first fruits offering. And here, within here within the first part of. Um, our present one to get the Mets off Caduce, the Book of the Seven Seals, because we want to follow along with them, Hark, at least 
with the first, second, or so, the first couple of verses, because sometimes the context is different. Sometimes we see something very much different from King James to the King of Kings, and then we go and we check out the Hebrew or the Masoretic, and usually the Masoretic, when it's correct, would agree with the King of Kings. But sometimes in the King James, some things, though it's a good translation, not perfect, you know what I'm saying? It could have been better, you know what I'm saying? But compared to all the other type of Bibles for English speakers, especially for our people who are familiar with the King James context in one form or another, it is the best English reference. And that's why we use the King James Version of the Bible in, its, um, in the Schofield the Schofield Reference, Schofield Study Bible. We have that at www.lojsociety.org. You can download a PDF version and use that on one of your, you know, the media devices. So some of this can also be used, you know, the free downloads on a media device. So here we begin. That's the Ma'ab, the world were manifested to do, ahadu, amlaka, orita zedagim, Rafa Hayas Distum Amlakah Egizi Ari Hera Rista Dargo Uremia set him with the Rabega Bahim Gize Bewer Sahatim Benor Hibatim Gize Amlakah Egizi Abe Hera Kamia set him with the Rakamita Sabis Boa Frehulu Be Kurata was said, um, Be in a kibimadurgo, Amlake egezi abe hera, sumu yit a rabbet, then Wedemeret a whim as a fra is a heed. Sometimes it's good to, if one, one chants in the word, to be still for a moment and allow one's spirit to meditate. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it shall be, the English Targum, the Targum is now, and it shall be when thou art come into the land which Egeziabher, according to his primordial name, in the Hebrew is Yahweh. He who is who he is, and Egeziabihir, the sustainer of the firstborn chosen nation of the light, is a more accurate translation, or the God from across the seas, as some have translated the Ethiopic name of God, but it's known to be his primordial name. And it's very interesting when we study the name, but in the Amharic, it's Egeziabihir, or Egeziabihir, Egeziabihir. Amlakhe or Amlakhe egezi abihir in the Hebrew Yahweh Eloheka Yahweh Eloheka and the the Eka part the Eka part uh, as the H in the Amharic or the the Amla Amlakhe in the Gutes would refer to your male your male source, your male power, your male amlak, amlak, not to be confused with amalek, amalek, you understand, which is another, so you hear the difference in the two, but in English, sometimes it could be a little bit confusing, this is what we need to study, but here it says, your male, and so it's speaking to each of we as Beta Israel, each of us, each of us males, individually, which means there's an individual responsibility on each of us individually, although we are called in the collective sense, but when Yahweh, when he who is who he is speaks to us, he's speaking to each one of us individually. That's an important nuance that is lost in the King James Version of the Bible where it just says, and it shall be when thou art, when thou, thou art come, even though if you understand Old English, thou, is different than ye. Ye usually means you all, while thou is one. But most people do not, you know, they say that reading and, and, and the ability to read and language is very poorly understood. In fact, one of the keys is literacy. 
and we've told a lot of our brothers and sisters and others who may be listening to this, if you have any difficulty in reading, please enroll in one of these programs, these community programs or centers, and, 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 and get, get, get that over with. You know what I'm saying? One is stifling their own education. And we're not talking about just the Amharic literacy. Because how can you go from being an English speaker to Amharic if you have difficulty reading in English? So we encourage the society and the brotherhood. And I and I, Rasi, Adinos, Tefar, Wendam, Yadin, encourage getting this message out. Because we may have brethren or sisterin who have this. And people feel they have a lot of phobias about it because a lot of people um, have been cruel, you understand, to those who, instead of being helpful and giving them this tool, because even they must recognize how important it is to read. Remember, they did not want so-called black people, enslaved Africans, lost sheep, to be able to read. They, they didn't want us to be able to read, especially the Bible, but just to read at all. So if you could read at all, you could read the Bible. And even those of us who are able to read do not give Torah and scripture study, you understand, and the study of our divine heritage the proper emphasis. In other words, we have the ability to, but we don't do. So we squander and waste that ability, you understand. So reading is, is so fundamental, and every black male should be able to read, and we should think about this when we talk about what's up with black men in America and why are we as black men in the situation that we are in. The answers are right here, especially in this particular Torah portion. There are, there are the answers, the key, when it speaks about this fourth aspect, the blessings and curses. Stay tuned. Stay tuned as we hope to elaborate and to go into some of the details on that in, 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 a, in a separate pod. In this one, we just want to cover the basic. Now, the basic here says that when we come into a land which Yahweh, which Jah, you understand, which God our Father and the, and the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, giveth thee for an inheritance and possesseth it and dwelleth therein. Now, we've touched on this in, our, in the earlier portion, but like we said, we had some technical difficulties, and I don't think we've been able to recover that, so we're recording this, in a sense, again. But we think that nothing is lost in that. It's, it's even better this time. The first things are man's best. You understand the next things are God's best. It's a principle. You understand there are exceptions to the rule, but the exception proves that the rule is, 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 is right and exact. That when we first touched on this, the Holy Spirit showed us that, first of all, it is the Lord our God that's giving it to us. We're not giving it to, to ourselves. We, we need to understand, therefore, spiritual power. We, there's a spiritual interpretation of this, too, in a New Testament or Burt Hadasha, Hadis Kidan sense, where the spiritual, where the land is the spiritual reality to be able to see the unified field of God's consciousness, what some might call Christ consciousness. In other words, see the living word. You understand? Know see the matrix, in other words. That, that is when the Spirit now has opened up our eyes and we're able to see this as a, a rhema word and a living right now word. You understand? Know That's the spiritual territory. Often Christians are able to grasp the spiritual land, especially in the... A materialistic sense well you understand but in the full sense they haven't but there's a spiritual interpretation what we call a New Testament interpretation but the Old Testament interpretation you understand and the present manifestation for us in this present time is a coming out you understand and we are in a wilderness period as black people right now we're in this wilderness period as the, the once lost but now found, Beta Israel, as the Falashas of the West. We're in this wilderness period where Moses has died. In a sense, civil rights is what we call Moses. Remember, there's an older video that we put out there where we said that Moses is dead. And this is before even Obama was, was coming to his, you know, to the point of really being the president. But in some key ways, we should understand that civil rights as we thought of it 
for black people and so forth and so on is, is, is dead. You know what I'm saying? Because the Hyksos have come in. And the Hyksos, this is another area we don't really have, we don't want to go off this point. So remind me on this area of the modern Hyksos will be the immigrants, the foreigners, whether they are Hispanic, whether they are black Africans, whether they are Arabs, you understand? The other immigrants go into the, the Gentile world dominion class usually. That means they go along with the founding white fathers, part of that Gentile world dominion systemic anomaly, right? And then the other immigrants, they come over here because of civil rights, because they see what black people have been able to achieve in such a society, and they look at where they're at, and they, and they see the opportunities over here, so they come over here and they utilize that to come in the door. Now, there is a rift between the native rulers and these new immigrants. And the Bible, Revelation, talks about a spiritual Egypt. And so if we look at it in spirit, we can see that Hyksos, shepherd king, so-called, are referring to both of Abraham's descendants, both the Edomites, or Esau's children, as well as um, Jacob's children or the Israelites. And we have this picture, if we would expand to really understand who these Hyksos or immigrants would be. In fact, white people even consider us as black folks to be immigrants too, in a strange way. Even though we say, no, we were, we were, we were stolen over here. They view us in the same class. If you look, look at the Tea Party and the rest of these radical terrorists, American homegrown kind of thing. Look how they look at the other people. They look at the blacks, the Hispanics, all of them. They put us all in the same category. You understand? And they view their founding fathers as the real rulers. Now, blacks open up the door, just like Joseph opened up the door, for other immigrants to come in to this particular system, or so-called modern Hyksos. That's why we kind of touched on that, and it's going to be a lot of relevance as we go forward. Now, the next aspect of this is that he giveth it as an inheritance, right? If you notice in the Bible, an inheritance, we have to possess it. Now, this is looking at the African Zion. This is looking at our African promised land. Even looking at Shashamani as that through the Ethiopian World Federation, through our beloved Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, who is that angel. As it says in the book of Exodus, he will send an angel that would guide us. But we are to listen. We are to listen to that angel. It's clear that black America did not fully listen to that angel. So we went down into Egypt. The black people marched down to Washington with its obelisk and its other pharaonic and Egyptian um, types or anti-types, if you want to call it, in that sense. So... As we look at our African inheritance, the promised land, our African Zion, right? We have to recognize that it's Jah, it's Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? It's He who is who He is. You know what I'm saying? Who gives us that inheritance, even that physical inheritance. You know what I'm saying? To possess it and to dwell therein. And He says that when this happens, when this trifecta of, 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 getting the inheritance, and we can say that we have it, not that it's there and we have the promise, but that we actually have it, we possess it, and we're dwelling, you understand, we're dwelling in our promised land, you understand, that we are dwelling in our African Zion, in other words, in Africa. It says that thou, verse 2, that thou should take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land, that Yahweh Eloheka, your male, speaking to each one of us as black Hebrews, as black Hebrew males, as elect Rastafari, each one of us as Israelite males, speaking to each of us. It's not speaking to just the whole people, and this is a nuance that if we understand the spirit of it, it will help us to overcome the curses that we generationally are still afflicted by. Even though we are seeking to come away from that, we have to recognize that that is the context 
that's the world in the sense that we have been born into, right, which is not the world of our God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, here it says that we have to take these first fruits to put it in a basket, not the second fruit or third, but the first things of the earth, to put it in a basket, and we are to go to the place that Yahweh, he who is who he is, thy God, Eloheka, shall choose to place his name, to place Hashem, to place the name, his name, Hashem, Simu, his name in. Now that is there, or rather his name there, his name there. Um, Yahweh Shema. Now, Moses directed the Beit Israel that when they entered the land that Ha Elohim, the true God, was giving them, they were to take some of every first fruit of the soil that they harvested and take it to the place where Hashem, the name, would choose to establish Hashem, to establish God's name. Deuteronomy 26, verse 1 to 2. Now, there they were to go to the priest, to the Kahin or the Kohen that was in charge, or really, if you say it in an abbreviated way, you understand, or really it's, it's natural said way, it would be um, Khan, Kahin, 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 Khan, just like that other Khan, that's another Khan, you understand, but that we were to go to the Kahin in charge, See, a lot of y'all thought that Kahin or Khan was some 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 Asiatic name, you understand, or like some some name of like Kung Fu name, so to so to speak, that belonged to another people. But actually, it's the name Kahin. It's priest because back in those days you had warrior priests and priest kings. You understand where the kings were also priests like among the Beta Israel, actually. But it says there, in this time when we first enter in, we have to go to the Kahin in charge, or the Kahin HaGadol, to like to say the high priest or the one that was in charge, and acknowledge, now we have to acknowledge that they had entered the land that Ha Elohim swore to their fathers. So that which was sworn to our ancestors, even if we go back to the Shashimani land grant and the other land grants in Ethiopia and throughout Africa, you understand, but mainly the, the, the nucleus, the crux in Ethiopia, the cross, in other words, in Ethiopia. Now, this was sworn to our forefathers, even though some of them did not inherit it and there was a remnant that went there, but it's the same context as we find here in Deuteronomy chapter 46 that the priest was to set the basket down in front of the altar. And then they were to recite a recitation, and we find this in, um, in verses 5 to 10. There's a very interesting recitation. Now, coming up in this recitation, because we're going to pause for station identification, shall we say, pause for the cause for a moment right here before we get into that, but there's a couple of important things we want to just point out, that it's going to speak of our father Abraham. It's going to mention Abraham as an Assyrian. Now, some may get the false impression based on um, whitewashed media and academics that the Assyrian were white people or so-called Middle Eastern people. The original Assyrians were black people. You know saying? Were black people. There's a very interesting site, um, Real History, where the brother has some very good... Um, very clear, and even in some cases large pictures, historical art and facts, that demonstrate the presence of black people in ancient civilizations. Now, when we pointed out the two books that we pointed out, we want to just point out briefly here, we'll hopefully go into an individual treatment of this book. This is a book that my, my earthly father, my earthly forefather, had had written. A portion of it was published in the Mohammed Speaks. It's called the Antiquities or the Biblical Antiquities of the Black or the Hamitic Race. The Biblical Antiquities of the Black to say the Hamitic Race. 
Now, this particular book, which belongs in black race studies and history, to say our story, is very, very important, and I will summarize this book as well, and it's, and it's at our website. You can go to Lion of Judah, LOJSociety.org, and click on books, and it's available there. Get your copy of this, and we're going to... We're going to touch on this because if you don't understand this history, when you read the next portion of the Torah portion reading, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 5 to 10, and if you're used to um, whitewash, scoly ass, and so-called historians and um, bibliolators, you know what I'm saying, maintaining the systemic racism, of the European and Anglo-American academia, they will basically deny out of hand any black presence and even try to counterfeit themselves or whiter peoples to try to dismiss the role of black people in this ancient period of time. But it's important for us to recognize that Abraham, Father Abraham, was a black man. You understand? Abraham was a black man. And also to recognize the role of Ethiopians, right, in that particular period of time, and to reconstruct this this Nimrod figure. You see, because the Nimrod um, deconstruction, where they make him out to be a boogeyman and a bad guy, is a part of the curse of Ham and the curse of the the the, the falsified curse of black people that many um, white so-called pseudo-Christian, white anti-Christian, as well as lying Jews, so-called Jews, have written into their falsified and anti-black Shemitic histories and, and bibliolatries, so forth and so on. So this book helps. It's a small book, but it's a very important book. Um, a dissertation that was written by my earthly father. And as he said, we'll get into a little bit more of this, the biblical antiquities of the black race, when we touch on what the recitation, the, the recitation for the first, first fruits, what we are to recite, and a, excuse me, and a proper understanding of the context. This is why this book as well, From Babylon to Timbuktu, which is more of the history of the black races, including the black Hebrews. And this work, which was only published partially, partially um, back in the 1970s, but um, it was suppressed and it did not get a full publication. All four parts are contained in this document that is now for almost 40 years available in its its fullness, you understand? But this book, From Babylon to Timbuktu, is talking about the history of the ancient black races, black races from Babylon to Timbuktu. That means from Iraq and that furthest point over there, Iraq and Iran, that we know Iraq and Iran, Iran, he ran, she ran, they ran, so forth and so on, see spot running. From that area over there, which is way over in the so-called Middle East region, all the way to West Africa, where the slave ships, um, USS Antichrist, Caesar's Christ, Jesus, Jesus, picked us up, you understand, and took us over to the West, fulfilling the curses for disobedience on the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I and I ancestors and us in this present time. So we're going to touch on the next part of Kitavo. We can't avoid Kitavo. Kitavo is, is too important to avoid or to even rush past. It has too many important elements. You know what I'm saying? So like we said, we're going to take a pause for the pause at this point, and then when we pick up on, in the next part of this, we're going to go into what the Israelite, the first fruit recitation of the Israelite, which points to a historical reflection to our father Abraham, who was a Syrian, a black Assyrian, a black Syrian, a black so-called Armenian. You understand? You wonder why 
some of the Armenians like black people or there's an Armenian-Ethiopian connection as well. So in order to understand this in this proper context, we need to understand our suppressed and lost history, our divine heritage. So we need to have a reconstruction of history, our story, in order to even properly understand the Bible. This is where a lot of folks have a lot of problems because they know a little bit, but there's other aspects that they still are seeing through the white supremacist distortion, you understand, of our story and a so-called Jewish distortion because the counterfeit Jews, the cryptic Jews, the other Jews, you understand, have a lot to do with this, um, this distortion because they have, they're that stranger that has come into our inheritance and that in itself is also biblical. So, as you know, we can, we can go on and we will go on, y'all willing. So stay tuned for the next part of this. We're going to pause for the cause. Shalom, Aras, Tefari. So stay tuned. More to come, y'all willing.